All right. The picture is just something my daughter drew. Doesn't have any application, but uh, wanted to uh, share what's just recently, um, you know, events happen around you and it just gets you thinking about certain things. Um, and synchronistically, um, something was being rolled out at work that is absolutely in just fitting for the um, discussion or talk that I heard from this guy that is from the 60s. This guy from the 60s was basically saying why jobs have to suck. <laughs> why why do jobs suck so bad? And he was given a reason for it, you know, a, a intellectual reasoning why our jobs have to suck. And uh, the, the, the idea, the concept could really be rolled out to just all of life in general, this whole matrix. He even talked about the world, and he's talking about it back in the 60s. He's talking about the world as being like one big machine, and it's the machines that, you know, pretty much are, are doing everything for us. But life doesn't have to suck. Work doesn't have to suck. But it still must suck for the most ridiculous reasons. <clears throat> and where he was going with that is work must suck because we believe it must suck. We collectively, society as a whole, where life could be whole, just so much easier. We just believe that there has to be some suffering and pain in order for us to deserve getting a paycheck. Like, you, you should not get a paycheck unless you offer up some sort of suffering and pain. But the amount of jobs that are necessary keep reducing. Like, there, there are still, there's still work that must be done that, that you actually have to pay somebody to do, and some, there's always somebody willing to do it. Ironically, those seem to be the jobs that get paid the least, the, the ones that need to be done. And then society creates all of these other jobs that are just busy work, meaningless, pushing paper around, doing some task or function that really could be undone. It could be, it could be left alone. But then how would you get all of these people their paychecks? And that's, and that's how you see the idiocracy coming forth. I mean, we really saw the insanity of the world in during 2020, 2021, the action, action, action Jacksonation movie, the, you know, <laughs> the C, the V, the whole, the whole, all of the, the, the complete nonsense around that and what was pushed down our throats that we all had to do. It's no different than the daily workplace. Um, so in coincidentally with me listening to this guy talk about this at, at work we are having a problem with one of our locations about 500 workstations have not been getting a deep clean and somebody's complaining that the dust is accumulating too much on the back track you know that like nobody can clean their own desk anymore that's that's the first thing to just notice like i don't know how they did it back in the 60s but these days Heaven forbid anybody should have to wipe down their own desk or do any type of self-cleaning. That just, <laughs> it's unheard of. So <clears throat> you hire a janitorial company to clean. And the janitorial company saying, well, deep cleaning of workstations, that's not in our contract. We will have to charge you for that. Okay, well, how much is it going to cost for you to clean these 500 workstations? The, their desk, their desk with computer monitors, keyboard, how much is it going to cost? Oh, and by the way, they're not going to touch anything on the desk. They're not going to like move a pencil even. They're not going to touch that. They're not going to touch any of the electronics. They're not going to wipe down screens, phones, not, nothing. Only thing they're going to do is if the desk is, is, if the person who sits at the desk removes all of their items out of the way, they will wipe it down. They will dust it. They will get underneath it. They will dust the frame, the chairs. They will vacuum. So this is going to cost $8 a desk. <clears throat> so we live in a world now, too, where de a desk can't just be a desk. They have to be these ridiculously expensive desks that have a million moving parts because they can be raised into a standing position. For the 1% of the people out there who actually do it, they can be raised up into a standing position or they can be put back down into a sit. So more things to break, of course, more things to keep us busy. They can be pushed 
you know, motor, and, and it's not quick either. It's not like you just tap a button and it goes into full stand-up mode. It's You've got to sit there and slowly, the thing slowly raises, and then it slowly goes down. So once again, the workers will not move them into standing position to help the janitorial team, even if we pay them the $8.00. They will not, the workers will not raise their desk so that the janitorial team can get on there and clean. And the janitorial team will not raise the desk either because they're saying they're afraid to uh, break anything. They're not going to touch anything electronic. That's, that's their, the law they're going to live by there. So <laughs> we, we, we can pay them $8 to clean the desk, but we can't, they cannot raise the desk and, lo- and lower the desk. So now what are we going to do? Well, now somehow my name gets thrown in there. Well, Scott can do it. <laughs> Scott's on salary. <laughs> we don't have to pay him. He can just go over there and do it. So Scott can go over there and raise 500 desks. I don't know how long it would take, 30 seconds a desk. I mean, they're, they're slow. So that the janitorial team can get under and clean under the desk. And then as somebody was, you know, pondering that, well, wait, Scott's going to have to go back and lower the desk. So you can't just raise the desk. <laughs> you have to go back and lower the desk on a second trip because they all have to be, you know, in sitting position for some reason. I don't know what the reason is. It just, that's the way it must be. And uh, and the, the amount of busy work just to justify getting a paycheck is laughable. It's it's stupid. It's funny. And, and nobody ever asked, you know, questions like, well, why can't we just give them a piece of paper that says we're not going to hold you responsible if a desk breaks during the process of you l- raising and lowering it. Just just sign o- sign something saying, you, okay, do it. We're not going to hold you responsible. Do it. Or <clears throat> if they want to charge us more, they can charge us more. I mean, they're already charging at $8 a desk a fortune. But um, Or why not just hire an employee? That's I mean, th- th- you've got enough money there to justify hiring somebody to just do that job. Just go around and raise and lower the desk. Maybe you've given them a few other things to do. But that's that's not on the table either. We're still, in these talks, we're still at the stage where just Scott does it. The other question I have is, you know, these desks that go up and down, this is kind of a new thing. I, unless it's a change in reality, I don't think they did this back in the 80s, 70s, 80s, 60s. 90, I don't I don't know when this started. I don't know when up down desk became a thing, but it, it can't have been that long. What did all the janitorial companies in the world do before these things? I mean, surely they cleaned underneath the desk. How did they do it? How did they get it? Did did feather dusters with a pole, you know, a feather duster at the end of a pole, did that not exist? I mean, it, it, is that is that not something we can do still today? Can we can we get up feather duster in a pole and crouch? Can people physically crouch and get down and clean can can the vacuum not fit under a desk if it's not raised all the way to the top i mean these are all the questions that that come to mind but you can't ask these questions as we saw during the action action jacksonation movie the the you can't ask questions like that i mean it's it can't, it's unfathomable that you even to suggest it makes you look like you're some kind of extremist like what how dare you suggest such a thing but this is the world but this guy was going on to say you know this this is the way it must be the world must give us meaningless task and busy work in our jobs they must suck because we have not accepted the idea that we can receive anything like paychecks and paychecks are just a form of energy uh, a form of us being able to live with some sort of ease. We can't just receive that without giving something back, some sort of pain, some sort of suffering. And that is my world. I mean, I see it. I've, I've been seeing this for a long time. This, this world, this, this workplace is unnecessarily hard. And the people who rise to the top are people who are really good at finding meaningless things to do or, or very OCD about things or very like hyper clean hyper organ like take everything to the extreme like some psychological disorder like monk like that show monk i mean it's like you have to be like to really rise to the top you have to be good at finding a lot of tasks that aren't really necessary to do 
but it all looks neat and clean. It looks like something that should be done to somebody out there, all the other psychos. And, and that's how you earn your paycheck. It's insanity. It really is. And I'm not saying that you need to be a slob and that you need to be disorganized, but the, the, the beauty of this in the workplace is there's like no ceiling to it. There's no, there's never good enough. You're never, you can, there's always something more you can do to be more clean, to be more organized. I mean, and being your level of organization can be subjective too. And then, you know, not just organization with the physical world, but you got the digital world and your organization of files and all the busy work that you can create on the computer that's not even necessary. I mean, it's really, it's not necessary. A lot of busy work that we do on the computers, you can just do away with it. And it but we, we live in a society where all this stuff must be done. <laughs> and that's how you justify the paycheck. And almost to, to rub salt in a wound, almost as if to just like <laughs> really torment you. Some, some wise guy has to go out there and say, you know what they always say when they die, when you're on your deathbed? I, nobody ever says, I wish I gave more time at the office. And, and yet that's what we end up doing all the time. We give our whole lives away to the office. And yet at the same time saying work-life balance and don't, don't spend all your time at the office. I mean, it's just, it's, it's a freaking joke. They, they don't let you have it both ways. They don't let you have the paycheck without putting you through some level of misery and torment. That's just the way it is. And I get it. I'm making enough that, you know, whatever. That's just that's what comes with it. Now, I also recognize that there's a certain level of crazy that they can discuss. They can put it on the table for topics of discussion. But whether or not they actually carry it through or they... Companies do this all the time. They start some insane initiative that you, you can see it's insane and they start it, but it never works out because they can only push the absurdity to a certain point. And even this thing can't get too much life to it. It, it might get wings for a moment, but it's going to fail. It would peter out and die. They're not going to be able to <laughs> justify me doing this amount of work and doing my regular work during the week without somebody saying this is insane. I mean, it's, that's just going to happen. But so far, nobody's, no, nobody has noticed that this is an insane idea or that there are other options out there. Nobody has, has noticed that yet. And no, it's, it's not up to me to voice my objections because then I would be labeled a complainer, Mr. Negative, all that stuff that goes with it. That's, that's, what, that's what this world wants you to do. It wants you to look like a complainer. It wants you to look like you're negative. It wants you to get into the fight. It's baiting me right now to get into the fight. It would love for me to get into the fight. But I don't. But this does extend out with greater, I, you know, you know a, on a grander scale, you could take it beyond just the workplace and just say, why does life in general have to suck? Why, why do we have these things in our, in our life that are just nuisances for no reason at all? We just, they're self-imposed nuisances. We, we torment ourselves for no reason whatsoever. And you know, the, the Matrix, the first Matrix movie actually put it out there. They said, you know, they tried to make the perfect world Matrix system and it was just always rejected. That we need our systems, our collective consciousness, we need the suffering. We need it to suck. The matrix that doesn't have the suffering doesn't work. And there's actually some laboratory scientific research to support this. And I know some people say it wouldn't have to suck if we didn't have a belief system that it should suck. In fact, that's what this guy was saying from the 60s he was saying it was our beliefs that it must suck that's why it was having to suck but how deep of a belief system does a colony of rats have and the laboratory thing was called rat utopia or something like that they put all these rats in a perfect environment the rats i mean rat utopia instead of thriving Instead of multiplying like crazy, they petered out and died. The colony didn't survive because rat utopia just was 
<laughs> the opposite of what you would think. It it just it it it, it wasn't. I mean, it was the Matrix for them. The rats in the Matrix, where everything was perfect, had to had to die out in that closed system. So maybe it has nothing to do with our beliefs about whether or not we should suffer. Maybe it's just part of the system. Suffering is is part of the system, part of the simulation, part of the 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 purpose of being here. We we must go through the suffering. And when I say suffering. That's relative, right? I mean, this this isn't the uh, this is the golden handcuffs. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm not truly suffering. It's just busy work. It's nonsense work. It's intellectually insulting to have to do some of these things, but it's not it's not great suffering. It's it's more of a nuisance. But that's my thoughts for today. Um, I will get into the person who was given this talk, but I realized just in doing that. I could derail the whole conversation because people start getting into the person that's well known and they start getting their own biases about that person. Then you don't want to even give the idea any merit because you don't like the person or that sort of thing. Why can't we just have an idea and look at the idea for itself without attaching all of our biases that come along with it and just not, you know, just rejecting an idea because somebody said it that you don't like? I mean, just take the idea. Even an idiot can have a good idea. So take it for what it is. Just look at the idea for itself. So I'm not going to cite anything specific because I just don't want to get off topic or off the idea. Which kind of leads to a whole other conversation about, you know, the system sucks. And part of this system seems to be our internal fighting. And it's so connected to our biased, our belief systems and our groupings, you know, this we versus they. We we find reasons to group together. If some if we like something, some something somebody says, we they're they're our best buddy. If we don't, and then you know, the next day they could say something we disagree with and we hate them. I mean, it's just it's it's weird how people cluster together around commonality of belief systems and then they fight and break apart for the same exact thing. Anyway, that's for another discussion. I'll end it at that. You all have a good day. God bless.